why do you think they're finally announcing in CNBC and the New York Times and just everywhere, okay, it's a depression? I mean, I mean, my answer is because now they're going to sell us the next solution, giving the very bankers that did this more power. I hate to even call them bankers because there are real banks and you know real banks that loan money locally that do a good job in many cases. But uh, these swindlers, these money changers, these globalists that pose uh, as bankers, these Ponzi scheme operators. But, I mean, what does it mean, though, to have them signifying that we are going into a depression. I mean, is it because they know the public isn't buying it anymore, that we're in a recovery? I mean, we go from them saying we're in a recovery to maybe it's a double-dip recession overnight to it's a depression. Well, I think that um, the public realizes there's something dramatically wrong. What they call it is irrelevant. And the uh, recognition of that by uh, the media uh, may have come about uh, because of the tremendous outside pressures that we've created. And uh, I think that it could also be that, and I put this in the international forecaster not too long ago, um, I've been told because Congress has refused to uh, provide funds for the extension of unemployment that they won't provide funds for stimulus. And that means that the Federal Reserve is going to have to supply the money. And I've been told that over the next two and a half years, approximately, they're, they're going to uh, uh, apply about $5 trillion to the economy. And so if major media was saying, gee, uh, it's not, it's going to be a double dip recession and, uh, you know, woe is me. And then all of a sudden, uh, perhaps several months from now, everything starts to turn around the, and, and the media would say, well, and that's the people who said these things, that, well, look, I, I guess we were wrong. Things are turning around, and uh, and it's going to be okay. And uh, so they can, you know, go with the other side. But that's what I think is going to happen. It'll be very inflationary. Uh, it'll probably keep the stock market from plunging where it should plunge to on a short-term basis, but the market's still going to go down uh, to reflect lower earnings and uh, a lower GDP during the second half of this year. And uh, I think you're seeing that in the market now. Yes, we had uh, a, couple, a couple of mini recoveries, one during the last week, uh, which Wall Street would call, call a dead cat bounce. And uh, I think we're going down to the 8,000, 8,500 uh, area uh, here prior to the election. We could go deeper. And it's because the fundamentals just aren't there. Uh, through stimulus and through the Fed, uh, both are producing about $2.3 trillion. All we did was go sideways for a little over a year and slightly higher in GDP. Uh, very little was accomplished. Uh, unemployment of the second half of the year, easily 25% uh, in real rates. And then you have all these people who are going to be roaming around, too many of them without checks anymore, they're not going to be very happy. So I think August and September uh, are going to be volatile months because I think a lot of people are going to be complaining. Some might demonstrate. Uh, there could possibly be riots, but I, I don't foresee that, at least in my mind's eye at this point in time. And so you're going to have a, a lower stock market, and uh, there's going to be a lot of people who are going to be disgruntled about that because the value of their pensions and their cash value, life, life insurance policies, and uh, also your um, annuities are going to go down in value because the stocks are going down and they own them. And so it, it's not a happy time. And uh, even if the Fed throws money at the whole thing, will it work? Well, regardless, now is the time to get the maximum effort out because the system is trying to use the crisis they've created to remake the world in their image where they have even more power to control our lives and become even more wealthy. And it's critical that during this crisis when people are actually ready to listen that we tell the truth so there's an alternative to their tyranny. Uh, so this is such an important crossroads, such an important critical uh, time in history. Let's go to Shanky in Georgia. You're on the air with Bob Chapman. Go ahead. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me on. Yeah. Uh, Alex, just want to let you know, I became a Prison Planet member a couple of weeks ago, and the videos on there really are over the top, unbelievable, informative, really well done. Uh, I've really enjoyed being a, a member over there. Um, 
I think you're right, with Bob and, and y'all are right, with uh, radio and the Internet being the, the main vehicles to keep us all motivated and uh, getting the word out. That is, you know, as long as we have uh, the Internet, you know. Yeah, they wouldn't be trying to shut the web down worldwide and free speech down and curtail it if it was ineffective. They're, they're now openly saying they want to sh- shut it down which is a big blow for them to have to come out and say it. It shows what tyrants they are. They wouldn't be doing this if it didn't have power. Alex, let me give you kudos on one thing. You are the only person on the planet to point out that LeBron didn't go to Chicago because Illinois has got $13 billion in debt. <laughs> He's not going to go to a city, a state that's, that's, that's underwater. I want to give you kudos for that. Well, no, I mean, that's but, how I knew, and, 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 uh, and of course, Jaron pointed this out as well uh, to me, that... Florida doesn't have a state income tax like Texas and a few others. And so, of course, he's going to go there if he's getting a, what's his contract, $99 million or something? I mean, if he's got this giant contract, he is going to go where he gets to keep uh, more of that. If you've got a 5 10 15% state uh, income tax like some states have, even higher, why would someone give up $15 million to go to Chicago uh, or somewhere else, why wouldn't they keep it? I mean, and that's why everybody's leaving England and people are leaving France. And that's why the UN has said over and over again, and so is the OECD, uh, this big global management group, that they want worldwide taxes. The New World Order, first and foremost, is about unified taxes so they can jack them up and up and up and no one can run. Let's get a quick comment on that from Bob, and you can come back, Shanky. Go ahead, Bob. That is certainly true. And. These banks and these countries all over the world are following OECD guidelines. Uh, right to a T, it just isn't, you know, the U.S. pushing the issue. It is the OECD, and they are doing it. Uh, most countries uh, that I know of uh, question everything that goes through your account. And, you know, they want to know, well, uh, you just uh, received uh, $100,000 uh, a check from XYZ company in the United States uh, to go into your account in Mexico City. Uh, why did you do that? And, then the, and the company says, well, you know, we're in business and we sell things in the United States. And then and meanwhile, you, and then meanwhile, it came from heaven. <laughs> Exactly, but then meanwhile, hundreds of billions of dollars of drug money are laundered by Federal Reserve mega bank members, shareholders, and that's not an issue. That's left alone. But now they're trying to change IRS regulations, and I actually got an email about this. People wanted me to ask you, where $600, if you sell a $600 used riding lawnmower, they're saying it's going to be a federal felony if you don't report that and pay taxes. They know the underground economy is keeping America hanging on. They want us bankrupt. And so they're going to harass some car wash in uh, California for a four-cent unpaid tax bill. And that was in the news up in Sacramento. The IRS showed up with armed agents. But meanwhile, hundreds of billions are in the banks of drug money. That's not going to be looked at. That's right. And what are we talking about? We're talking about uh, about three-quarters of a trillion dollars a year. And uh, about $300 billion of that comes out of Afghanistan in the form of marijuana, and which of what eventually becomes heroin. You, you mean and, opium? Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah, I guess who's running it. Well, they admit our government's growing the opium over there. Uh, let's. Uh, anything else, Shanky? Yeah, real quick. Uh, Bob's got a great post on your site. Witness the recent gold market takedowns, and he's he's got a statement in there. That says the result of this treachery is you know, coming with the complete complete collapse of the stock market and the end of real estate. You know, as an investment, the powers that, uh, it, it, Bob, talk a little bit more about the gold manipulation, if you can sum it up in a few minutes, and I'll, I'll hang up. I, I think yeah, I'll real fast. Time. I mean, I could boil it down and get Bob's take. It's very simple. They, it's like a beach ball. They can push it down, but it always goes up even higher. You look at the year-long or the two-year or the five-year or the seven-year graph, it's straight up. Uh, but the manipulation is damaging the economy. Bob, tell folks. And, and they started that in 68 illegally. It became legal in 88 through the Working Group and Financial Markets, uh, a uh, executive order. And it's not only the gold and silver market. They're manipulating everything. I mean, this is truly a corporatist fascist economy. And, yes, as the gentleman said, uh, and you did as well, Alex, uh, it's like a beach ball. And, uh, yeah, they could push it under, but it comes popping right back up again. And uh, it's going to continue to do that because it's the only real money in the world. 
Well said. Let's go to another caller. Let's talk to Duff in Kansas. You're on the air. Hey, Alex, it's a real privilege to get to talk to you. Uh, as a result of listening to Duff, it's good channel. to talk to you, but your phone is really bad. Uh, try to get it out quick. Yeah. Put Duff on hold and, and, and see if they can get a better Skype or a better, uh, you know, get to a better spot on their cell phone. It's just, it's unintelligible, Duff. Uh, Leo in Pennsylvania, you're on the air. Uh, Mr. Jones, how are you today? Good, sir. Welcome. Uh, I hail you once again for all your efforts to continue to expose these people. Listen, this morning you were talking about conditioning and how they use celebrities, you know, to make us think that these people are something that they really aren't. You know, Hollywood's been using films for a number of years to condition us into believing certain things. 